Yeah, so Tremaine uh, will not practice. Tremaine's day to day. Are you okay with Star? Is he going to be down Sunday? I uh, don't know. He's still he's still in that COVID process at this point. So. Uh, it seems to be all right. You know, I mean, that's best I could tell you. I don't see him, so. What have you seen from this Colts team? Obviously, kind of a slower start to the season for them. They seem to be settling in and kind of things are just clicking. <clears throat> yeah, good football team. Uh, talent across the roster, all three phases, they play well. Uh, play fast on special teams. Um, you know, well coached offensively. Uh, what they do offensively, you know, with a good quarterback, and, and Frank's had a few of them there with uh, going back to Luck and then and then Phillip last year, now Carson. So um, always seems to have a good quarterback in, in his system, and, and they execute at a high level. And um, the running game is, <coughs> is uh, I think, tops in the NFL also. So, But then they have skill at the tight end and receiver position, the backside of the backfield. Defensively, again, well coached. Um, and uh, I mean, they just they, they do a great job taking the ball away, um, changing up their schemes. <clears throat> so uh, they're a real good football team. What makes Jonathan Taylor so? <clears throat> uh, hmm. You know, I mean, if you could kind of build them all a back that way, I mean, the, he's got size, power, vision, balance, um, home run speed. You don't always. F <laughs> it's hard to find that all and all those traits in one in one back. And uh, he's got them all. Sean, given how well your secondary has played really since you've been here, you've always been good at defending the pass. Is it more of a challenge for your defense to prepare against a team like this, like a like a Derrick Henry or a or a Jonathan Taylor, a good running team with a really good offensive line? Yeah, I mean, yeah, good players, good systems. Hard to hard to prepare for. Generally speaking, uh, this one is is the same. Like you mentioned, just with uh, how how lethal they are in the run game. Um, and, uh, and and so, you know, we've got to be, we've got to play with good integrity on defense, good discipline on defense, doing our jobs, executing at a high level. Offensive line is this as good as it gets in the league? That group that yeah, have? I mean they're they've been together a few years now, and uh, I know uh, Fisher's new this this season. So, uh, but we we faced him in Kansas City, another another high level player, and uh, they play well. Uh, experienced, um, you know, they, they seem like they communicate well also, and um, so they're, yeah, I mean, they're they're good across the board. What's the biggest difference between you, know, you play Philip Rivers' offense for the Colts in January? What's the biggest difference with the way that it's been running with Carson now? Uh, I think you see some differences. Uh, it remains Frank's system, though, and, and what and what he's he's been around and what he what he's done, and. Um, you know, it's given us quite a bit of tr trouble, to be honest with you, over the over the last few years. So, um, you know, we'll, it'll be a big challenge for us. When a quarterback switches teams like Carson did, you know, obviously with the Eagles a couple years ago, it, can you still take some tendencies that he had when he was in Philadelphia and you faced him? At, even though, does it translate at all to Indy now? Uh, I would say in some ways, you know, in terms of the player and everything. Um, uh, maybe not in all ways, but in some. <clears throat> you know, he's a good football player. He's first round pick for a reason, and um, he's had a lot of success in this league. They've locked the, they've, they've locked the punt last week, Coach. Yeah. Obviously, we know what happened week one here, but is it um, knowing those two things that they might want to come after? How important is it to pay attention to details on special teams like that? Huge. Yeah, I mean, it's huge. Um, like I said, they, they're, they're good in all three phases, they're a well balanced team. Um, and, uh, you know, so. When you can block a punt, it, it usually means something good's happening for your team overall. You know, change of field position in particular, and and so um, you know we've got to make sure we've got that detailed up this week. Well, the secondary's been banged up. They are very good at taking the ball away. Yeah. I mean, they're second in the league behind you guys. What makes them so good at forcing those turnovers? Well, I think they play with a lot of vision on the quarterback, and and uh, you know it seems like they do some things at a high level. Um, they're co like again, I mean, it, it all starts with the players. Uh, they have, they've got skilled players, and they've got good coaches that develop the players. So uh, they got a good thing going. Sean, what specifically do you make of the bond that Stefan and Josh have established for themselves? I mean, you look at that SI kids cover with Stefan and Josh on the back. And 
beaming smiles. I mean, just it's the genuine friendship that they, those two those two have. Yeah, I mean, it seems like um, it, you know they're they're. Uh, they have a mutual respect for one another, which is the start of all good relationships. And um, you know, they both play at a high level, and they challenge one another all the while, uh, week to week, to take their game to another level. So um, I think that that bond and that chemistry is important for our entire football team. Steph's talked about how when he sees Josh searching for searching for something, that he will calm him by saying. Just remember, it's just like playing catch in the backyard. Yeah, no, that's that's what we all have to do. I mean, the mental part of this game is real, and um, you know, he's trying to get, trying to stay on track, and trying to stay on track, and we need each other. That's you know, uh, that's an important part of all this um, that goes into the team. Sean, obviously, you want your team to be physical every week, but baseball team that the Seahawks show already with the Colts demeanor. Is that a bigger point of emphasis this week, just the physicality? Um, you know, I, I just. We emphasize it week to week, you know. Listen, this is a physical game, and you've, you've got to play play a physical style of football. Uh, they do. I can tell you that much. They do, and, you know, they they, uh, they move people up front on both sides of the ball. They're physical across the board, and um, that's uh, that'll be a part of the challenge for us, quite honestly. Carson is known to get when the play breaks down, he goes off script. Is there something – how can you prepare for a quarterback that – at times, plays almost like a backyard style of game when the play breaks down. Yeah, he's mobile. I mean, he's athletic, uh, smart. Uh, he extends plays, like you mentioned, and, and that also creates a headache or another challenge for, for the defense. Uh, so it's another thing we got to work on this week. John, for the rest of the game, Matt and Josh both talked about Matt Breida. Josh both talked about being on the same page with the touchdown pass, read the defense properly. When you have a quarterback that improvises so well and a veteran group of receiver, if you can add in a running back like Matt that can, you know, have a good hand on how to read defenses in the past games, how valuable a skill can that be? Yeah, I mean, I think all our backs do a good job with that. Matt Matt showed it last week, but our, all of our players do a pretty good job with that. And as was mentioned with Carson, you know, it's it's important. I think Pittman does a great job with that also uh, for them down the field. He's made some big plays for them, in particular on some third down, two-minute situations, fourth down situations down the field. So it's important that – we can defend that, but also then, then we can try and do that on our side also. This is the last game that John Policiano has to miss. Uh, how's, how's he come along? Is he kind of on track to return? Yeah, he's, he's moving in the right direction. We'll just see where it goes uh, as we look ahead here, Josh. So we'll just take it one week at a time. Without much, without much notice uh, on Sunday, Harrison Phillips had to step into a pretty big role uh, as a run defender. How yeah. did you think he came out and in spots this season when he's had to run defend? How, how did you uh, yeah, he's, uh, I thought he's been very consistent for us. Um, you know, he uses his hands well. Um, you know, he's, uh, he's one of the kind of glue guys to our, to our team that doesn't get mentioned a lot. Uh, and we've got many of them that kind of kind of lurk below the you know, below the surface a little bit there in terms of notoriety, I guess, and uh, we value that. How uh, how are you speaking with him this week if he has to step into a pretty big role if you don't have a star again? Comfortable, yeah. Comfortable. I'm, a lot of confidence in him and a lot of confidence in, uh, in the guys around him at the same time. Yeah. So, all right, thanks. Thank you.